Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you out there. Wherever in the world, I believe you are having a good time. This is Samuel Nick and welcoming you to Edison Online Academy. In this video, I will be taking you through AutoCAD 3D modeling. We will actually be modeling a 10 inch schedule 80 weld net flange. We will create a 3D model of a flange. A 10 inch schedule 80 weld net race fish flange. So please, um, I would like you to subscribe to this channel, like the video, click on the bell icon so that you always will be notified whenever I upload any video and you can connect with me via my social media handles. You can WhatsApp me directly on, chat with me on WhatsApp. If you have any need to chat with me directly on plus two three four eight zero three eight two nine five one eight five. Thank you so much. Okay. So let me move over to the software. So So um, in our previous video, I actually created the 2D of the flange, the 10 inch schedule 80 flange. This is the flange I created in the, I'm gonna drop the link to that video in the comment section. So this was the 2D, this is the flange I created in our previous video. This is the flange, this is 10 inch schedule 80. Weld neck race fish flange. This is how this is. This is the internal diameter here. This is the bolt hole, two bolt hole. This is the race face here. So, in case you do not create this, you can move over. Check the link in the comment section for that video. You can go there and follow up on how to actually create this because this is what I'm actually going to use to. Um, model to create the 3d model we're going to use this outline so this is the dimensions this is the dimensions i've already provided dimensions over here which i actually got from pipe data i got it from here from pipe data here okay so um like i said i'm going to use this to actually create a 3d model so to create the 3d model Make sure that you set your this into 3D modeling. You have actually set your click on this bell icon, go to 3D modeling, then make sure you are on front. Be on front. Okay. Then from front, make sure your corner is on front as well. Then after creating this, based on these dimensions. When you've created this based on these dimensions here. So I'm going to kick start the video. I will start creating the 3D model. Okay. So what do I do? Change, go from front, change the view control here on the left hand side, left upper hand side, change it from front to southwest isometric. So this is it here. These are the dimensions here, which will be, we don't need the dimensions, but you need the dimensions to create this 2D outline. So now, what next? We are going to create the cross sections that we 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 used to create the models. So we need actually circular cross sections. So first and foremost, we we'll start with this one, this side. So we have our flange three part: this side, this side, and this last side part. So we're going to start from this upper side. So what do I do? I go up here to um, cycle. I use the two point option. I come here to the outer here and to here. The cycle is created, but it's not properly aligned. The cycle is supposed to be perpendicular to this line, but it's not perpendicular. It's lined the same way. So what do I do to make it perpendicular? This cycle is supposed to be like a plan or a top view to this line. So what do I do? I need to come to this coordinate here. So 
let come here, change the world. When you change the world, now look at this cube here and take note of the direction that will put that cycle in the proper position. For this cycle to be in the proper position, the view has to be on top. It has to be on top view. It has to be aligned with top view. The cycle has to be aligned with top view. So now come over here where you have wall, this coordinate, and change it to top. Now let's delete this. And let me change the layer to our OD. Now, let's draw the cycle again. I go to cycle, I select two point option, I come here, I come. So let me go again. Come to cycle, two point option from the edge here. When an endpoint appears, you click. Then come here again, endpoint appears, you click. Okay, I've drawn the first one. Now, still using two point option. We're going to draw another cycle from here at this level. This level here. Click here, then come over here and click. Now, we're going to create the, the, the 3D model of this part. So, how do you do that? We're going to use loft. We're going to loft these two cycles together. So come over here where you have extrude and click on this drop down arrow, then click on loft. Then you are told on the command line, select cross section with lofting order. So we're going to select this cycle. This cycle, we want to lock these two cycles together. Select the first one, click on the first one, and then click on the second one. Press enter on your keyboard. Press enter again. We are lofting cross sections only. Press enter to lock cross, cross section. So it has been lofted. Let me. Change this from 2D wireframe. Change your visual star control from 2D wireframe to realistic. And you observe that it has actually been lofted. So we're going to loft the other part here. So for our drawing to be visible, what are we going to do? I'm going to hide this part that we've already lofted, this cross section that we've already created by lofting. So I select, I click on it, I right click. I come down to like get to isolate, isolate menu. Then on the isolate menu, I have isolate object, hide object, end object isolation. I click on hide object, and now it's hidden. So I'm now going to create a cross section over here on this side. So I go, I come to cycle again. I click on the two point option. I click here at the edge here. I come over here. I click here as well. Then I, I repeat, I go to cycle again, two point option. I come down here, I click here, I come inside here, and I click here. So right now I'm gonna lock these two cycles together. So I, I click on, I go to lock once more on that modeling tab, this modeling section of the ribbon. I click on lock. I click on the first cycle. I click on the second one and I press enter. I'm told to enter an option. I'm locking cross sections only. So I press enter and it is locked In the same manner, I'm going to hide this again because one part is still remaining, which I've not actually created a cross section. So I select, I click on this, I right click, I go to isolate once more and I hide objects. So right now, there is this part, this smaller part, this smaller rectangle here that has not been locked so what do I do? I go to cycle. I click on two point option as well. I come to this point here. I click here. I go to the opposite side. I click here. Okay. Then I go back to two points. I come here. The bottom part of that rectangle, I click. I go to the opposite side. On the right hand side, I click again. So right now, I have these two cycles. What am I going to do? I'm going to lock them together. I click on lock. I am asked to select cross section. I select these two cycles together. And I press enter on my keyboard. I am asked to enter an option. Cross sections only is my easy option I'm using. So I press enter once again, and it is created. So right now, I have the three cross sections. So let me um, bring them back, bring the three cross sections that I have actually created right now. So I right click on my screen, I right click, I go to isolate, 
I click on end object isolation and the three parts have been brought, the three parts have actually created. So now this is one, this is two. The other one is underneath. Let me go to wireframe so you can see. This is one, this is two, and this is um, three. Okay, so right now, um, these are three separate objects. I'm going to mesh them into one object. Okay, so what do I do? I go to union, come to this the solid editing section of your ribbon. So while you are there, come over here to the first set of commands. Go to the top, topmost one. You will see solid union. So I click on solid union. union. I am asked to select object. So I select one, two, and three. I press enter. And now, let me go to wireframe. This is now one object, acting as one object, one solid. I have combined the three solids together into one. Okay. So we, this is just the outer. We've not done the in, inner diameter aspects yet. So I select this and I'm going to hide it. So I select this and I right click, I go to isolate. I click on hide object, it's hidden again. So right now, this is the inner diameter aspect, which I'm going to create the 3D model, the 3D solid of the inner diameter. So right now, what do I do? I go to cycle command. Um, let I can still use two points. Okay, let me use two points. I can use center radius if I choose to, but let me use two points. So I click on two points. I come over here, I click. I come over here, I click. So this time around, I can still lock. I can use extrude. I can use sweep. Let me use sweep. I'm going to sweep. So having put the cycle here, I come over here. I come over here where I have locked, where I have extrude. I click on the drop down arrow. I click on sweep. I am a to select object to sweep. So I said, this is the cycle I want to sweep. I select it. I press enter, enter key on my keyboard. I am told to select sweep path. This is sweep path. This center line here. I click on it. And the object has been swept. The 3D has been created. Okay. So um, what do we do next? Um, I'm going to subtract. Okay, let me bring back the outer that I hit before. So I, I right click, I go to isolate, I end object isolation, and this has been brought back. Let me go to, so uh, there's no hole yet. The flange is supposed to have a hole where fluids, liquid and gases are going to flow into and flow out on the other end, but that hole is not there. So to create a hole, I need to extract the inner diameter of the model of a 3D solid. So how do I do that? So I'm going to use subtract command. So first of all, let me move from, change from realistic to 2D wireframe. OK? So I change from realistic to 2D wireframe. OK? Hold on. Let me hide this once again. So this is the inner. Let me change the layer to inner diameter layer. OK. It's not now on inner diameter layer, so I can easily view it. So when I, I put it on inner diameter layer, I just select it and click on that inner diameter layer and press escape. And it's now inner, like, inner diameter layer. So let me press escape. Let me end object isolation. I go to isolate. I end object isolation. Now I have both the outer and the inner. So I'm going to subtract the inner diameter from the outer diameter. How do I do that? I come to the ribbon on that solid editing. I come up here. This is union. 
the one below is subtract, solid subtract. I click on solid subtract. And I'm told to select object. When you want to subtract, you are going to first of all click on the one you want to keep and press enter. Then you click on the things you want to subtract and press enter. So I want to keep the outer. I click on outer. I press enter. I want to take out the, the inner. I click on the inner here. I press enter. And subtraction has been done. To confirm that subtraction has been done, let me go change from wireframe to realistic. So this is realistic. This is the whole here. Let me show you. Let me go to orbit and so that I can orbit. So this is actually the whole. Our hole has been created for the flange. Okay, but we are not yet done yet. So the boat holes, we've not created the boat holes. We need to create boat holes. The flange has boat holes. Okay, a boat flange has boat holes. So we're going to create the boat holes right now. So how do I do that? I move back to um to the wireframe. So Right now, we are what we are on to the wireframe. Make sure this is on top, still on top. So how are we going to create our boat holes? So what do you do to create the boat holes? Just um, to create the boat holes. Already, this is the diameter of the boat holes from here to here. I have it already. So what do I do? I come up here to cycle. I click on two points. And I come here. I draw. OK, OK, OK. Let me, should I draw it from the, OK, let me draw it from the bottom. Let me draw it from the bottom. So first and foremost, let me hide this model. Let me hide this one. So I select this, I right click, I go to isolate, I hide objects so that we can easily view what we're doing properly. So having done that right now, let me create a center line here. from midpoint to midpoint, draw that line from midpoint to mid midpoint. Let me actually put some center line layer. Okay. So now I come to two point cycle. I draw the cycle here. So um, I can use sweep to create that cycle. Create the 3D of that cycle. I can use I can use a um, loft, but I want to use extrude because I want to extrude way beyond the object so that I can easily select them when I, I want to cut them off. So right now, what do I do? I move over to extrude. So where I, right now, where, what I have there is sweep. I click, click on that drop down arrow. I click on extrude, and I'm told to select object to extrude. So this is the object I want to extrude. I select it, I right click, I press enter. I move up. I'm going to move up. So make sure you go up, 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 up. And I stop there. So right now, this is where our bolt hole is going to be. But the hole is not open. The hole is not open. The hole is not open. Our hole is not open. So our hole is not open. So what do we do to open up the hole? I need, we need the, about uh, 16 holes. So how am I going to create those 16 holes? I'm going to use array polar. I'm going to use polar array. So what do I do? I type in polar array or array polar. I type in array polar. Okay. 
and on the command line, I'm told to select object. I select this. I press enter. I am told to specify center point of array. So I come here. This is the center point, this one, not here. This second point here, I click there. And this pops up. There are six items. There are six items, but I need, that's supposed to be 16, so change this to 16. And close. So you have your 16, these are the 16, where the holes are supposed to be. So right now, the holes have not been created. What do we do? First and foremost, if I select this, this pops up again. So I want to make all these things as individual object to make convert them to individual object. What do I do? I select it and I click, I type in X. When I type in X, look for explode, click on explode. So now they are now individual objects right now. You can select each of them one after the other. So what, what do we do next? What we do next is, uh, what we do next is uh, to, we're going to, um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, to, um, the next thing we're going to do is, the next thing we're going to do right now is um, I'm going to end object isolation. So go to isolate, end object isolation. So right now we're going to subtract this long rods to create the bolt holes from the main model, from the flange. So to subtract, what do we do? We go to subtract on that solid editing. Click on subtract. Then we want to keep this flange. Click on the flange and press enter. Then we want to take away all these bolts this long rod. So select all of them and press enter. And now your bolt holes have been created. These are the bolt holes right now. Bolt holes have been created. Bolt holes have been created. Let me use off it to show you. So these are the bolt holes right now. Oh, our bolt holes have been create, actually been created. So with this, I've actually come to the end of the tutorial for today. So there is nothing difficult, like I said. The link to how I generated the 2D, I'm gonna put in the comment section. So go over the tutorial slowly, one after the other. Just go over it slowly, one after the other. And um, please, I'm delighted that you're here. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please just subscribe like the video, click on the bell icon, so you're always going to be fine whenever I post any tutorial. Thank you so much, and bye. So, bye, we'll meet in, in the next tutorial.